All right, I quickly want to talk about kind of interaction with corporation company reps at these conferences. Because to me, it's still a bit of a secret or a bit of a not really clear of what to do. Um, there's very different kinds of companies uh, at these conferences. So some companies I feel are there to basically show off their technology, kind of wanting you to use it. Um, one example is, for example, Graphcore, uh, the kind of new kid on the block for AI hardware in that they claim they have a chip specifically designed for the types of operations that machine learning applications do. Um, uh, so even more specialized than a GPU. And also they claim they are faster uh, for equivalent kind of money spending than an NVIDIA GPU, like a classic GPU. So basically you get much more bang for the buck. Now, for now they just offer a cloud solution, I believe, and uh, they're gonna sell their, their cards through Dell. Um, the way it works is they have kind of a low level compiler that will compile your model to these uh, cards and for now you can interact with it through C++ and then TensorFlow will come later, uh, something like this. Uh, the thing about their card is that they have an extremely large memory right next to the, to the compute units. Uh, this would be kind of your traditional level one cache. Um, yeah, so that means that you get much faster access technically to your local variables, but then they don't have any kind of RAM, uh, which means their like entire card only has somewhat like 300 megabytes of memory, but they claim they can just basically distribute. If you have a large model, you can distribute that over many cards and then it, it, you'll get a you get basically the speed up of the cards um, without having to sacrifice a model size another company that shows off really cool technology is a company that does lidar um, and i forget the name right now but i'm going to try to look it up uh, they so they do a lidar sensor basically that is super tiny and um, it, it costs a fraction of like a traditional LiDAR sensor. So I think they said theirs cost about $12,000 and it's, it's really <laughs> tiny and has a couple of advantages uh, compared to traditional sensors. As far as I understand, their lasers are mounted on the same chip so they always point in the same direction which reduces a lot of inaccuracies. Um, so if, if, you know, I guess people would be interested in that, you know, for self-driving cars and so on. Uh, these are kind of the, the hardware demonstrations that I've seen. Uh, then there's other things like there is a wellness center where you can get a, like a massage, uh, which is sponsored by the big companies, which is pretty nice, but I'm not, I'm, probably too much uh, I, don't, I don't I don't like these kinds of things too much <laughs> maybe I'm just socially too awkward um, yeah for some companies I feel that they're just there to recruit and they don't really want to want to talk about what they do too much so this this would be an indication of this would be a company where basically all of the all of the reps at the booth are recruiters, uh, so not non-technical recruiters uh, that basically just kind of tell you what you can do as a career and not really what the, the company does as a whole. So um, I never really know what to talk about then because I don't know, I feel like most people are interested and drawn towards interesting work in if that comes with good working conditions then that's a plus but i don't feel uh, for many people that that is the most important thing though i could be wrong um, and probably it's good that for some people it is 
because otherwise everyone would take my jobs, the ones that I like. Uh, yeah, so, so these companies will usually, if there is an engineer, they will not talk about too much what they do, like, oh, it's company secret and so on. So the funniest one <laughs> was actually the NSA. Um, talking to the NSA was kind of painful because you kind of ask them, so what do you do? And they're like, yeah, machine learning. <laughs> and you're like, are there any, you know, because what, what I want to know as a researcher, right, is like, is there anything I could do there that I couldn't do anywhere else, right? So is, is there any, is there any unique problems that the NSA faces that actually demand new research, like demand new machine learning methods or, or you know, some kind of change? Um, so I asked this and they're like, yes, there are problems like this. And you, know, you ask like, which problems? And they're like, yeah, there are problems. We can't tell you. So everything's basically whatever. So I made it a game to like ask them more specific questions and watch them like, oh, this is classified. So yeah, if, if you're here, definitely check them out. It's, it's a fun, it's just fun to talk to them. Um, yeah, the, though I feel to most, most companies, they're really interesting. Uh, I don't know more than half of them, so just going up, uh, ask them what they do, kind of just get an overview over the landscape of what's needed currently in machine learning research. I think that's really useful um, because as an academic, I tend to be very disconnected from the, from the industry side of things and from what people actually need or want in practice. So talking to all these companies is really helpful to get an overview over that. Yeah, so, but if, you know, if you know a better way, I, I know people, some people are much more successful than me talking to uh, companies at conferences. I'm definitely not the best at this. And uh, yeah, if you have a better strategy, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Though I'm pretty happy so far. Um, all right, that was that. See ya.